Hi everyone in cloud computing and welcome to episode 51 of the Cloud Computing Training Show with Brad Nelson and internationally recognized and the world's number one cloud industry expert and thought leader, David Linthicum. This show is sponsored by Nelson Hilliard, cloud computing recruitment specialist placing great people in cloud, IoT, fintech and AI. In this week's show we will be talking about that globally over 1,500 institutions and more than 10,000 educators have joined AWS Educate to accelerate their journey towards helping the young generation acquire the cloud skills. Hi Dave, it's great to have you on another training show this week. Yes, it's very much a, a philanthropic project on AWS's part to uh, make our young people work for, the, work for uh, people who are doing AWS, so let's talk about this. Yeah, absolutely. In fact, it's been a bit of a, an AWS week, hasn't it? What with uh, reInvent, obviously, last week and, you know, the C-Suite show and the training show this week, AWS seems to uh, feature quite heavily, which is always good. And, and yeah, you're right. They seem to be doing a lot of good. And, you know, I think there's a, a number of different views on this uh, that we can cover today. But I think they've got, you know, kids as young as potentially 14 or 15 choosing AWS to educate themselves in this program, which is, uh, yeah, it's a rather interesting slant on things, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, they're basically becoming headhunters and recruiters and, and uh, job placement assistants, things like that, uh, versus, um, you know, uh, providing technology, which is a little scary. I can understand them providing education and some of the skill sets and some of the trainers and things like that. But they're, you know, matching up, uh, in this case, according to uh, uh, Teresa Carlson, Vice President of Worldwide Public Sector at AWS, uh, hundreds of thousands of job openings in cloud computing today, and they'll now help students communicate with over 30 potential employers, including Amazon. So what they're doing is they're training people as well as finding them places to go, which is interesting. I mean, I'm, I'm like, well, is that supposed to be their role? And, you know, if it is, you know, obviously they're going to operate in their own selfish interests. And so there's some good and bad aspects of this. Yeah, it certainly is. Uh, it's almost like a cloud grooming the next generation, isn't it? We sort of groom you into our brand and promise you a job or, or something like that. So, look, I guess I guess the opening question then is sort of, you know, how do you see this helping you and, and not sort of AWS? Or how does it help the individual that's looking for, for training and not just sort of for AWS to profit off that leverage? What are your thoughts, Dave? Yeah, I have no uh, issue with AWS promoting their own self-interest, and they're going to do that as a company. But it ultimately have to look at how this really kind of applies to the companies and how it actually applies to the uh, folks who are becoming AWS trained. I mean, is it going to be a good thing for them just to become AWS experts and not experts in Microsoft and Google and Alibaba and you know cloud architecture in general and security and governance and things like that, and just kind of have the skills to you know, uh, set up an S3 instance and set up an EC2 instance and do serverless computing. So is this too much focused on a particular product, you know, versus someone who's going to have an eclectic interest in what, you know, everything that's really kind of existing and how to be an architect. I probably wouldn't hire somebody who just had AWS skills. You know, I would want them to have a larger array of things. In other words, they understand database technology, they understand um, governance and security and all those things are really important, but also how this stuff kind of fits in the context of an architecture, including dealing with on-premise systems. If we have folks who are just going to serve the niche, be able to do a particular AWS skill and that's all they know, uh, they're not necessarily going to have the value out there. Now, I'm sure AWS will be able to find them a job and they get the certification and things like that. But where are they going to go? Is that the right thing for them to do? Is this going to be managing a career or just managing a job? And my concern about this is they're not necessarily looking after the career. They're looking out for their ability to use AWS in this particular instance to get the skills they need to grow the AWS footprint, which is in the, is in the interest of AWS, but not necessarily myself, the, the candidate or the, uh, or the target companies are looking to place these folks in. Yeah, and, and you're right, it, it becomes a, the market becomes then flooded. We go from one extreme to the other where we've got this huge new batch of, that have been farmed and cultivated and this new crops harvest that have, you know, all do a very similar thing for the same company. It kind of dilutes the, 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 the certainly dilutes the pay to, to a certain degree because there's so much opportunity and so much choice to the market. But, but also like we've spoken about, you know, people aren't niched enough. Uh, some people have really got to specialize in things, but you know, you brought up a very interesting point, I think it was a week or two ago, where you, people need to have a general skill base as well. You know, not just in one platform, but but giving a, a variety, whether that's Google, Azure, you know, AWS, Alibaba. We, the 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 horizon still needs to be 
quite broadened, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. And you have to have a, you know, basically an understanding of how you do computing holistically before you approach a particular product. I mean, I'm not, a, and, and the thing is, this may be lacking the kind of base level education. So we don't necessarily require that these folks have a computer science degree or MIS degree, or even they've done, you know, computer experience, uh, computing experience at all. They have a very narrow understanding of this particular technology understand how it works, that doesn't mean they're not going to be able to grow this into a larger career-based skill. But I'm not sure the jumping off point is going to be understanding a particular cloud computing product. It's going to be understanding how you do compute holistically, how it exists in an architecture, the needs of the business, how they translate into architecture, you know, how to measure and do metrics and things like that. And they're not teaching them that because ultimately it doesn't kind of serve their needs. So at the end of the day, I think that it, the AWS decided that they're limiting their ability to kind of roll out and sell more cloud because they don't have enough trained people out there able to, to do it and execute it. So they're really trying to solve that problem as a way to get to a larger business footprint. I understand why that's happening. I think it's cunning. Uh, however, you need to make sure that you're doing right by the people who you're educating and who you're placing in these companies or else we're going to have you know, this uh, purge in uh, two or three years, we realize that we don't necessarily need these many people who understand the AWS. And, and so that's the larger concern here is that people are getting sold a particular way of doing something and ultimately won't be in, uh, in their favor. And we see this all the time in education. We tell people, you get this particular degree, you'll make a certain amount of money. And that turns out not to be the case. There's lawsuits flying around here in the States where they feel they were uh, misinformed about what they would actually make when they got out of college or got out of some technical school and the jobs ultimately weren't there. And that's because people who teach this stuff don't necessarily have control of the market. They just have control of their particular products in this case. Now they're going to train people for them. Yeah, it's so true. I mean, you know, you look at some of the roles and we, we again, I think we spoke about this on a, a training show a little while back, but some of the jobs that people were, were going for and they're, 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 they're getting the, the loans for that college degree, whatever it would be, um, I need to find out that artificial intelligence have completely removed that career. Um, you know, it's, it, it, you know, that career has become null and void because there's a, a few algorithms out there that are actually making those decisions and making that product or doing those service needs or whatever it would be. So, you know, it's, I think it's challenging times when people are looking at how much they're investing into that because another thing as well is you may well come out with an AWS certification um, that's just you know specific from that from college or something like you say without a computer degree uh, but a computer science degree sorry but essentially where do they fit within the culture of the business within a, a you know an IT collective in the culture that's going to be a very you can't really teach people that that's something a hands-on thing you know to do but yet they're coming out fully qualified as a an AWS architect or something like that from college but yet don't have the cultural fit to work in the dynamics of that would you see that as a potential threat and a problem yeah, there's a multiple threats and problems. That's one of them. That's a major one. I think the other threat and problem is transport, uh, transporting these skills to other skill sets. And the other you know, threat is uh, ultimately them not necessarily adding value to the companies that they're in and getting fired, not necessarily having a place to go. Um, and it's these very narrow skill sets that concerns me in terms of how we're, we're instructing people to, to, to move after their career. And this is just kind of another instance of that. And this isn't the first one. We had, uh, you know, NetWare certified engineers and the uh, Cisco certified Cisco certifications and all these things that had occurred in the past. And those things may have served the people well for a couple of years until that technology kind of fell by the wayside or just became not as important. And ultimately, they had to scurry around and look for something else to do. And I think that's not necessarily where you want to manage your career. You want to have an eye on what you're going to do. This is perfectly legitimate to have this as a sub-skill, but this should be base skills that you're building this off of. And I'm not seeing that up here. I'm not seeing that you discuss that, you know, in, in context of a larger architectural, you know, understanding, uh, we're going to provide you with the AWS skills. I think that would be much healthier than we're going to give you the AWS skills, you know, put you into a job, and then, you know, you guys are going to, we're going to hope for the best. And I think that's not necessarily the way to do it. No, I agree. And it moves us on nicely, maybe to your uh, your top three tips on the subject, Dave. Yeah, and the first is, you know, focus on, um, you know, a provider and not, excuse me, focus on general skills and not a provider. And um, so I wrote this backwards and I wrote the show notes. But ultimately, you're going to look at the general skills is really where the value is going to be. And so 
if I'm talking to a client, I can explain the difference between the different database systems and the storage system and how they work on premise and in the cloud and how they communicate one to another. I'm really not adding a lot of value versus if I can tell them what AWS S3 does and EC2 does is an instance of that, unless I can tell them what the other cloud providers have, I'm not adding a lot of value. I'm just saying uh, facts about one particular uh, system and that's not necessarily going to be a solution. A little dangerous. Keep a training plan in mind as to what you're going to go holistically. So I don't mind you doing this, by the way, if AWS is going to give away training and they're going to help you find a job, that's perfectly fine. But you know, make sure you understand this in a larger, more systemic way in which you're doing training. So get the storage skills you need, the database skills you need, security skills you need. So you can really kind of talk a, a good game as well as act a good game in terms of how this stuff kind of works and plays well together. You're not going to come out of the gate as an expert in any of this. Um, ultimately, this is going to be OJT that happens for a long period of time, but I'd rather you start marching down this general path using technology subsets or specialties such as AWS as a way as a foundation for your career. And then, you know, what about on-prem technology? I mean, this stuff isn't going, going away. At the very least, it's going to be you know, 30, 40% of our existing technology pack. We have to have people who operate this stuff, understand it, program it, secure it, govern it, things like that. And if we don't have the base of people who are able to do this, we're not going to have success in any of these things. And these people who understand how to do mainframe technology, I mean, they're going away. They're retiring, they're dying, they're, you know, changing their careers to real estate, you know, who knows what's going on. But there's not a lot of people around doing this stuff. And so your ability to kind of understand both worlds is going to be hugely valuable to companies that are serving both worlds. And so you need to basically put that in part of your career path as well. Great top tips there, Dave. Thanks very much for sharing those. Always a pleasure. And great to have you on the, another training show this week, providing some uh, great insights there. Great to be anywhere but Vegas. <laughs> exactly. Well, look, thanks for watching. And Dave, thanks again for being part of the show. And look, you can get Dave on Twitter, which is at David Linthicum. Uh, I'm also on Twitter, Nelson underscore Hilliard. Reach out to us for any questions or uh, to catch up. Always good to chat online in that social world. We're on Facebook, uh, YouTube, Instagram. So come and be a part of what we're doing as well. There's always something cool happening. Uh, check out Dave's blogs as well. There's a link below. Uh, they get published to the website pretty much every every twice a week or something or every week. Um, so check those out. They're pretty cool as well. And that you can find out more about what's going on there. They're cutting edge blogs about the, the world of cloud computing. Um, yeah, so look, you know, remember to like, subscribe, comment, and share these videos with your friends and with your colleagues. Click that notification bell so you don't miss out on any of the future videos that we've got coming up. And again, thanks for watching and see you next week.